Hey, it's Mary and Lynn. We're on our way home from Austin, and this is another um, recording for Tick Ed. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about is some publications um, connecting Lynn and I to Moms for Liberty and a book burning. And it, it was just it, book it's banning. Book banning. It was a <clears throat> hit piece. Yeah, it was a hit piece, and we don't mind negative publicity or hit piece publicity because publicity is good publicity but we do just want to set the record straight we are not moms for liberty we parted ways with moms for liberty um i was never a member i met you at an event right on, she just met me at an event we're not moms for liberty right we are not we we don't we're concerned it is part of our agenda to protect children and families and certainly pornography should not be in schools and we're opposed to that but we align we want to make sure that the laws that everything that we do that we're either getting a law to protect the families or that we're applying a law and there has not been a law that kept schools from having indecent materials in the schools and so it was super hard for us to go and fight that and we also did not believe that it was an effective uh, thing until there were proper laws in place. We have been to the Capitol, we've seen the bills, there have been lots of groups that have been working to get bills through to protect children and keep pornography and obscene materials out of the schools and we believe that the state of Texas will do the right thing and give us that. But parents will still need to be the gatekeepers and follow through on that. But we're, we're having this conversation because we want clarity, or I personally want clarity, around the Moms for Liberty. Uh, Moms for Liberty started out as a 501c4 out of Florida. Uh, there was a continued to be a lack of transparency from them to their chapters, in, at least in Texas. And Transparency on who the donors were? Transparency on what? On what? Well, transparency as to where were they a pack? Um, you know, were they a PAC? What was their position? I mean, they marketed themselves on just uh, being a constitutional aligned organization that taught parents how to uh, bring what was being hidden in the schools into the public. But as time unfolded, it seemed very clearly that this was a movement um, to promote charter schools and uh, school choice and we okay. are so part moms of, for liberty is a front for privatization I, it, yeah i think they that are um don't know for sure just a lot uh, but again the lack for lack of transparency and then privatization meaning shifting public dollars into private hands in the form of vouchers or savings accounts or charter schools which are business deals they're they're real estate deals yes uh, there's other privatization tools through technology but that those are the main ones okay go ahead yeah. so um you know and i uh, for a while felt like I had a conversation with them uh at a national level and just kind of show them explain to them what was happening in texas and why the circumstances were different but the more i got into it the more i saw that they had a specific agenda and our agenda or my goal is to um, protect um, the where the majority of our children in Texas are always going to be educated, which is a compulsory education through um, the the tax supported and provided government education system as local ISD outlined in, in Article Seven of the Texas Constitution. So anybody who's a constitutional conservative can go read Article Seven. It tells us that we have to make provision for public free schools and it talks about efficient um, yes efficient schools so and of course we are for more efficient schools yeah. that aren't wasting money but it is right. in our Const Texas Constitution okay I'm doing East uh, I gotta go right here okay keep going okay um, so we're again we are not um, opposed to people taking their children and going someplace else we are opposed to the tax dollars going to being taken out of government education but more than that um, we're opposed for the government doing it we're happy for individuals uh, to have that right but they have to fix government education and the trend that we 
we see and we continue to have it verified by the things that they do is that there is a hidden agenda to destroy uh, the profession of teaching as well as to destroy the uh, independent school district where there is um, a representative form of government. And what's the greatest risk in everything is the diminishing of the representative form of government because that is what our country was founded on. It's what our state was founded on. They want appointed unelected boards and you know you can argue that well our boards are corrupt and there are all kinds of problems but we uh, we know that the corporate board is going to be far worse. We do know that. You have no way to impact them and um, so we, we have to push back at the local level but we also have to fight at the state level. And so anyway, just we just believe that it was best for us to have a state managed in a state controlled organization that fought at the local level and not to have influence from an outside of the state of Texas with their own agenda. And especially in this case, since Moms for Liberty lacked the transparency and seemed to be at, at different points in time aligning with you know, Betsy DeVos and Corey DeAngelis. And not that they haven't had some, you know, they have a relationship with James Lindsay and James Lindsay's a great educator about education. Um, and they've had a relationship with Carol Swain and she's certainly been a fabulous voice for CRT. But as time went on, um, it's there's a huge relationship and connection to the establishment, the Jeb Bush, uh, just all of the people who have actually been behind creating the education system that we have today, and we must be aware of that. Those who helped break the system, right, uh, from the outside, are those who are pushing the exit strategy and the school choice movement, which I find disturbing and coincidental, um, but the, all, also um, the, uh, the entities funding school choice, there's a lot of uh, nonprofits and education entities that are funding the school choice and, and policy wonks and public policy. Yes. yes. The, those types are, um, they're funding the school choice movement. So a lot of these bills that people think just some legislator came up with because they're geniuses or they're lawyers or um, that this came from the people. No, it actually is a cut. And, these are cut and paste bills that uh, are there. They look a lot like bills from other states. Sometimes they come down from ALEC, uh, American Legislative Exchange Council. Yes. These, they come from the left and the right. It's not really a partisan thing, although in Texas it seems to be more of those on the right pushing this. Okay, anything else? No, just, um, you know, just clarity there um, in regards to the, the break in the organization. And uh, we are definitely, it was more about the lack of transparency and just needing uh, to be based out of Texas. It just has never worked for Texas for uh, an organization with any kind of political ideology to come into Texas and try to implement their ideology in Texas. Texas um, Texans are Texans and we do want sovereignty. Um, so we, we parted ways for that and, and would love to have it have been, you know, amicable. Uh, and um, frankly, we're finding much more success um, now because um, we needed to be able to operate out of, across the whole state of Texas and, and, and create this network and we're being successful at doing that. So just clarity Not about successful that. successful so, through this traffic. Yes, so thank you. Um, that's our little tidbit for today. <laughs>